could you tell me a few things about the show you're going to have tonight, about the program, how did you choose it? Uh, the program is, a, I think, a good mixture of uh, well-known pieces and uh, pieces who are maybe uh, new for the, most of the audience. For example, we have um, this uh, waltz, Woody uh, Citronen, where the uh, citrons blossom mm -hmm. are, and uh, this is well known, a very well known piece. And then we have by Josef Strauss, um, the Guten Alt, so the Good Old Days, it's mm -hmm. called Guten Alten Zeiten. Uh, this is not so known, but uh, it's, he, he wrote that piece when he was very young. Mm -hmm. And it's so in the style of Lana or uh, Strauss' father, so very old-fashioned music. And so I, I tried to be together with Peter, we chose the program, and I tried to make an yeah, a in-between uh, choice of, mm -hmm. of pieces. We have Tritsch Tratsch Polka, we have uh, obviously the Blue Danube, and we have some uh, funny pieces in, so a little bit of everything. So there's a place for humor and for funny when it comes to symphonic music too. It's not all the serious. Yeah, it depends on you know there are um, most of most I think I would I would say maybe nearly all waltzes are really symphonic music, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the polkas are just oh, have been written for uh, for um, um, dancing music mm -hmm. for dancing. And uh, there are some polkas, they have really special, um, how, can, how can I say, special um, um, points of, of humor. Mm -hmm. So we have one, Im um, Krapfenwaldl, which is really <laughs> difficult to spell. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is in Vienna, a park and where um, an old-fashioned park, now there is also a bath there. Uh, where in the former days um, there was a, a lot of cuckoos and so this is a cuckoo polka you can okay. say yeah and th then we have um, um, surprise polka I can't say that <laughs> sort of uh, Facebook polka where Peter is doing a special thing uh, and uh, yeah I, w I would say some of the music is really funny. You wrote a waltz called Night in Bucharest? Yeah, it's Nopz in Bucharest. How did you write it? Uh, by hand. I know, <laughs> but what was the inspiration? The inspiration? What, what's the story of this? The story is, um, yeah. the story is um, that uh, we're now for 10 years in Bucharest for the Balul Viennes, where the orchestra playing there in the, in the ballroom. And in the first year, I was so astonished about Bucharest, about the, the city, uh, that I planned to, to write something. And Peter said, just try to write maybe a waltz, mm -hmm. like uh, we are ball, or we are not a ball, we are symphonic orchestra, but we are playing for the ball. Uh, so try to write a waltz, a dance music. And it, this is what I did. I just uh, wrote a waltz. The Schönbrunn Palace Orchestra is playing old symphonic music. How does the public react to that? I mean, how, what do you do to get the public into the right mood of this specific music? Because people are always in a rush, people are always... <laughs> yeah, I mean, the point is that it depends on. You have also in the classical music, you have... Um, Funny pieces. There are funny pieces by Mozart, by Haydn, yeah. or by Beethoven. Ah, Beethoven, maybe not. But um, and there are a lot of uh, funny pieces in the. It depends on how you get the program together. But uh, we are playing uh, normally as a normal orchestra in an elegant uh, mode, in an elegant way. We are dressed to, and this is. Uh, how our uh, audience reacts. So they come and see us, how we are, we are um, on stage, we, how we are prepared and we are looking on. And uh, then when we are um, playing um, a funny piece, um, yeah, 
they they just can laugh about without any uh, being yeah just being not yeah they're not stressed yeah mm -hmm. they're stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, as a conductor, how do you work with all the all the people who are part of the orchestra? I mean, how did how do you get them to have a certain chemistry together? And how do you work if you have a, a particular musician that is not part of the chemistry? Or uh, particular musician. Hmm. To, uh, this is a very good question because it's very difficult to play the Viennese music when you just for one year in Vienna. So you have really to be there, you have to live there, you have to um, join the city in all the plus and minus. Every city has plus and minus. Yeah? So Vien Vienna does also. And, and, but if you live there and you get the mood of the people, how they are and how they um, think and how they play music. So you, uh, this is the only way how to get to the real direction of how to play this music. And this is one point. So I have then, then I have, um, there are sort of auditions from, for the musicians and then they come to the orchestra and they are part of the orchestra. Some of them are leaving the orchestra we have now in the Vienna Philharmonic and the Vienna Symphonic Orchestra in the uh, Radio Symphony Orchestra of Vienna. We have a lot of musicians uh, in the former days they played in my orchestra. So they maybe I can say that the, the orchestra, the Schumbrunn Palace Orchestra is a sort of uh, a orchestra of uh, first step to, to play together and uh, for, for, uh, but for professionals obviously. And I'm very proud of it, of that, that uh, some of our musicians went down to the Vienna Philharmonic, for example. And uh, this is uh, just uh, a sort of, uh, you have to uh, rehearse a lot and to play a lot. Go on tour and uh, play. We are playing uh, five months a year, every day, f four, five different programs with very, very difficult music. So it's not only the Blue Danube, and the Blue Danube is difficult enough to play. Just imagine playing the Blue Danube waltz every day. It's not, it's not always the same group of people, but um, this is um, a hard work. And for that work you have to rehearse and to, to be concentrated on that. And I think at the end of the day um, you can hear uh, the result. Yeah. What's the program of your musicians? Do you impose some programs to them, some, some certain discipline? Yeah, the discipline of every orchestra is the classical music. So it's Mozart and Haydn and Schubert, uh, the Viennese classic. And uh, this is discipline, this is like warming up for a singer or whatever. It's, it's like, yeah. And if you have a lot of Mozart and Haydn in your program, uh, you can work on the discipline of the musicality. Of the orchestra. Did you have musicians who were afraid of a particular composer? Because I heard a musician who said he was afraid of Mozart. He was afraid of playing Mozart until he was 40. It, it can be. I remember when I was 12, 13, I hated, to, I was a member of the Vienna Boys Choir, and um, I hated to sing Mozart, and I loved to sing Bruckner. But I think this is the, the time of, the, of, 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 a, yeah, of a growing. Uh, men or women, I saw it in, with my daughter. When, uh, so the time from 10 to 14 maybe, this is the time of the romanticism, of romantic music, mm -hmm. obviously of pop music. Mm -hmm. And then when you get the uh, possibility to, to react on the, on the difficulties of Mozart's music, you maybe can, uh, uh, and you practice maybe the music also mm -hmm. more. You can enjoy it, yeah. As a composer, because you're also a composer, do you have a particular composer you are jealous of? Jealous? Yeah. <laughs> Richard Strauss. Uh, uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How did you how did you deal with Richard Strauss as a Thank as a you. as a <laughs> conductor? Oh, I'm better. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tell me about Romania. You have relatives in Romania. I have no relatives, but yeah, now, but uh, the family of my mother mm -hmm. 
is from, so the father of my mother he was born in Sibiu and uh, he spoke uh, all three languages, so German, Hungarian and Romanian and his parents uh, are from there and uh, yeah, so this is my, my Romanian line coming from. Yeah. Um, you play a lot for New Year's Eve. You, you have a lot of concerts and you have a lot of tours for New Year's Eve. How does your personal New Year's Eve look like? I mean, do you celebrate it in advance? Do you celebrate it after? Do you celebrate during the tours? Yeah, when you have a concert on the, on the 1st of January, you can't really celebrate a lot. You just make your concert on the 31st then you're celebrating a little bit to so a small party and that's it. Then discipline, go to bed and sleep and work again. That's, yeah, that's the life. <laughs> what are the main qualities that a conductor should have? Or should develop? Or sh <sighs> Conductors in our days are not what they have been, let's say, 30 or 40 years ago when I was 30 years ago when I was studying um, because I as a Vienna voice choir I sang together with Scholti and Karajan and Bernstein and and they were sh friendly with us boys but in in general they were like small let's say dictators small ones yeah so a little bit and in the in our days a, a conductor is more it's not a colleague of the orchestra but it's a it's it's a person who let the other musicians make music on their own behave, on their own thinkings, on their own feelings, and then at the end they, he has to organize all these different sorts of, of, of incoming, of inputs, and then make the, the final, um, you know, how do you say in English, final um, Touch, yeah. final draft? Yeah, or whatever, Put, putting it together, yeah, just. And so it's it's not a sort of, um, I want you to play like this, and I will have to play like that. It's just, give me the opportunity, give me the possibility, how do, how do you, or how would you express this line? And then the old boy player expresses the line, and, 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 and can say, it's okay, but, or it's wonderful, or we can make it like this. And it's, a, it's like chamber music, big chamber music. But at the end of the chamber music and the string quartet, there's the first violin player who says, and at the end we do it like this. So it's the conductor in the end who's f f making the form of the whole thing. This is the conductor of our, our days. So it's a conductor who negotiates, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, he has to. But he has to know what he wants, so from the first, he can't enter the stage and say, okay, let's play and play for me and I'm thinking about what you want. It's not possible. So you have, you obviously when you prepare the, the, the score, uh, you have a preparation time before. Maybe it's if, if it's an opera for a month and uh, you have prepared, you have to know exactly what they're playing and you have to know better, maybe better than the musicians what they have to play. And uh, if something is not as you like, you can yeah, you can work on it. This is the this is why we rehearse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you were to listen to a concert for your whole life over and over again, what would be the concert or the the piece or the, the piece of music? I can say nearly nearly every Mozart or Haydn, so classical music piece from Mozart and Haydn, you can listen over and over again. Uh, they are really... The last summer I did Don Giovanni and I did Figaro and Giovanni and Così fan tutte and after, uh, at the end of every Don Giovanni I was so pushed up by the music that I had the feeling, okay, I can do it again now, immediately. But I can't say there is one piece or something one time. And if you were to be the conductor of a particular piece over and over again for the rest of your life, would it be the same? No, I don't think so. No, this is boring. There are so many conductors, uh, there are so many pieces and so many different uh, composers and so on. No, I think you have 
you, you need 10 lives for or more, maybe more to know all the pieces of the world ever have been written so <laughs> it's difficult yeah. and how do you work with your orchestra on your own compositions Ooh. yeah, yeah. Ah, my own compositions hmm. this is all, always a point of this is difficult because the piece you write is you heard it in your brain and in your heart and then it comes to stage to the staging on it and you always have a different sort of listening to it so it's because it's yours it's like a child yeah um, when you have your own child and you have the child of another's family sitting on another table, it's, it's to the look there, you, you, the, the, the child is, is like this or like that, and mine is better, yeah. And it's like maybe maybe it's better not to conduct his own pieces for the first time. So maybe it's better let yeah let them conduct by another one, and then you have an, you see and you you hear a different aspect of it, yeah. It's very interesting when I write a piece for cello and piano or, or, or uh, leader for soprano and piano and someone, other people are performing it. And they're performing it in a completely different way. I wrote it. And it's very interesting to listen, it, to, listen to it. So it's, I, I think it's, uh, it can be uh, a, a new experience for every, for every composer to listen to, to others. Yeah, it's different, difficult.